Okay. Again, on these, all these reactions here, put the charges up up there first. I think it's a, it's a lot easier, right? This side has to be a plus two. He has to be a negative one, right? Just looking at the formula. He has to be a plus one. He has to be a negative one. Again, just looking at the formula. And there's nothing wrong with putting parentheses around polyatomics. Absolutely nothing. I like it. I think it's better. And then all you do is combine, right? Oh, perhaps this cation with that anion, and this cation with that anion. That's all you do, right? And then you look at the solubility rules to see if you can write AQ on anything. So you'd have the, uh, well, I guess you can see yellow, right? Barely. <laughs> So you'd end up with a PB and the OH. Now remember, just write their charges on there to help you out. Oh, so he's got to be a 2, right? And uh, K with the NO3. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with writing parentheses and stuff. Okay. And if you look at the solubility rules, this guy will be an AQ. Everything will be AQ except him. And then you, gotta, you should probably balance it, so you have to put a 2 there. Oh, and you have to put a 2 here. Then it'll be balanced. Then the ionic, break everything up that has an AQ on it. Okay? Make sense, Lauren? This is, so you're going to have this on the upcoming, upcoming exam. So if you're not sure how to do it, all right, I would uh, take some notes on it. And would we get points taken off if we didn't put an AQ in us? Yeah. That, yeah. 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 Okay. Boom. Common reactions. There's there's a bunch of reactions that are just all over the place and they're happening all the time whether it's photosynthesis or taste or you know what's going on in the ocean or just in, in the environment. And that's what we're going to talk about, being able to predict them and being able to understand them and knowing how things work makes your life a lot more comfortable or enjoyable. So let's take a look at some of these very common reactions. First, the parts. Jacqueline, how did the book define an acid? Do you remember? Yeah. Oh, hydrogen atoms. Good. All right. I don't really expect you to define this stuff. It's just a, a start. All right. Has, there's hydrogen atoms. That's going to be key. All right. You can almost think of, oh, okay, an acid reacts with a base. How the book define a base? Something that reacts with a acid. <laughs> so that would work for me. But I, by getting deeper with hydrogen atoms is even better. Because that really helps you answer answer uh, this one. Ah. Okay, so you're looking at a reaction, Desiree. Oh, that's an acid. How are you supposed to do that? There's always a what out front of this compound. It's the very first element symbol they write. There's a hint. Jacqueline gave it to you. An H. You have an H out front, an H, and then you have something else, an anion, I guess, right? Some anion. Okay, there's an H out front, and then you send you. They're going to start talking about strong acids and strong bases. Well, what does that going to have to do with us? It's not an easy question. But strong probably just means it's really, 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 if it's an acid, it's going to be really, really reactive. Very, very, I don't know, like if you've watched Breaking Bad or something, right? <laughs> there's, uh, yeah, there's, there's chemicals that, yeah, acids react with bases, but some much more violently than others. Okay? So, same with the base. Now, what it means for us. All it means is 
if it's strong, will will break up in ionic equations. We're going to break them up because they're so strong. So if we see a strong acid or a strong base, we break it up in, a, in an ionic equation. So what are these strong acids? Well, they're all here. So we have to know, we have to know the names and formulas of them because if you don't know them, how are you going to know that you're supposed to break it up in this ionic equation? Right? So remember you have the molecular equation, you write out the entire reaction. Ionic, you break everything up that you had an AQ on. Except acids are going to be odd. You're going to have an AQ on these acids. They're dissolved in water, but you don't break it up if it's not strong. So that's why you have to know what the strong ones are. So what are the strong ones? Which acids do you always break up? Hydrochloric acid. I'll get you started. HCl. Well, if hydrochloric acid is HCl, probably, Victoria, what's hydrobromic acid? HBr. And everybody, hydroiodic acid. HI. Now, you remember what sulfate was? SO4 with what charge? It had negative two. So how many H's? Two of them. And you got to, you know, the H's are always out front. And nitrate. Gloriana, what was nitrate? N-O-3. Yeah, with a? Negative. negative. So that means nitric acid has how many H's, everybody? One. Just one. Perchloric. Now, this one wasn't very common. Yvette, perchlorate. Do you remember what it was? You bet, perchlorate. Cl O4 with a negative. So know these guys. In fact, these are all those halogens, right? Just not HF, though. But if you know all these strong acids, those six, you're always going to break them up in these reactions that we're writing. So I just kind of got to put that in the back of your brain. OK, well, that means if these are strong acids, how are we going to identify a weak acid? We see, Gloria, this compound in, in the reaction. It has an H out front. You know it's an acid. But how do you know if it's weak or strong? Exactly, it's strong if it's on the list. If it's not on the list, it's got to be weak. And then if it's not on the list, that means do what? in the ionic reaction. Do you break it up if it's not on the list? No. Even though there's a stinking little AQ on it, you don't break it up because it's not on the list. So, not on the list. That's pretty much not on the list. Don't break up. Don't break up into the ions supposed to say ions. Don't break up into its ions. Okay, same story with bases. Except for bases, man, I wouldn't memorize. Oh, we should probably bases. Before we, Christian, okay, acids have an H out front. Bases, how are you supposed to recognize them? have an H, what, what do they have? An OH, right? The anion. So you have these OHs, and then you've got your cation out here. So that is a base. Something that has to react with the acid. Hydroxides react with, with the acid. Hydroxides are the base. Okay, now how do you recognize the six strong bases? I wouldn't memorize them. I mean, you can. You're going to be doing enough homework that you'll probably have it memorized. But in the solubility rules, all you do is pretty much look there. But it's kind of hidden. So it might be better just to know them. But you follow the solubility rules, right? And right away, you look at the hydroxides, and there's three exceptions, calcium, strontium, barium, for the hydroxides. So... Calcium, strontium, barium. But you got to combine hydroxides with those guys. So 
So how many hydroxides would there be? Two of them. Yeah, because you got a plus two all the time. So there's three of them. Then the other three, it all comes from that rule number one. Lithium, sodium, and potassium. Because they go with anything and they're always a strong, they always, they're always soluble. Lithium, sodium, and potassium. So it's pretty much the solubility rules, but so these you always break up. You always break those up. Because they're strong. And this one is kind of a trick question, this whole ammonia story. It's a weak base. And it's just something that we you have to know. It's a weak base. So that means it will react with acids. And it forms ammonium. So we just need to be able to recognize ammonia and recognize ammonium. Paulina, do you remember the chemical formula for either one of these? NH3 is ammonia. Good. NH4 with a plus. With a plus. There's ammonia. Good. So see how NH3, because you think of acid, you're supposed to think of what Jacqueline said, H's. NH3 grabs an H plus, it becomes NH4 plus. So that's so NH3, ammonia, is the base. Okay? Weak base. So weak, don't break up. Strong, break up. Okay. So now we're. This is where we're at. This is the whole big game plan for what we're doing now. I guess at the top of the list, you could have solubility rules, right? A solubility reaction, where you get a, a solid or not, right? And I'm giving you all the solubility rules. And if it's not a solubility reaction, it's one of these. So I think right off the bat, we're going to have to look at this, all these possibilities. There's one, two, three, four, five, five possibilities. One possibility, you're looking at the solubility rules. The other possibility, you're looking at the other side, all these possible reactions. Well, how can you tell which side to look at? There's a trick to this. Do you recognize it? <coughs> Thank you. Polite. Okay. All of all of these reactions, not the solubility reactions, all of the other ones have something in common every single time. What's always there? An acid. She found it. Gloria saw it. If you see an acid, right? So and we're gonna do this a lot. We're gonna be able to recognize it's something with an H out front. If you see an acid, it is not a solubility problem. It's one of these. And all we do is follow the format. Okay? If we see an acid, we're going to follow this format. Okay? And we'll, we'll practice this right now. So just remember that. If you see an acid, uh, this is the side. It's one of these reactions. It's not a solubility problem. So let's write molecular ionic and anionic equations for each. Now in your notes, you have the words. I replace the chemical formulas with, I replace the words with the chemical formulas. Because I don't want this to be a naming exercise. I want it to be a, this. So you can just write down the, write down the fo chemical formulas. Okay. We're reacting these two things. So let's ask Lucky Erica the very first thing. What type of reaction are we looking at? Are we looking at, oh, I got to figure out solubility and play that game? Or are we playing the new game with all these chemical reactions? Which one is it? The chemical reactions. Because you see what? An acid. May not know the name of it. Who cares? It's got an H out front. I guess we do care. Because it's an acid, we have to know, Christina, not yet, but we will. Is this strong or weak? All right, you have to go back to that list. Was it on the list? It 
it's not on the list, so everybody, this is weak. So when we get to it, we're not there yet, but when we get to it, do you break it up? No. That doesn't stop the reaction. It's just weak. It's just not going to react as violently as a strong one would. Okay. So, Lauren. So this is where we're at so far. We're supposed to be looking at our list of reactions. These guys, right here, not solubility. Which one is it? Which one is it? So we have the acid part down. If you see a carbonate, it's going to be the second one. If you see a sulfite, the third. If you see a sulfide, the last one. All we see is barium and hydroxide. It's got to be which one? Now it would be the second one. It would, it would be this one. Oh, you're talking about second one mean, well, it would be, I count second, I count second one this one. It'd be this one if you see a carbonate. But we don't see a carbonate. It's the, yeah, I don't know, we should number these probably, right? <laughs> one, two, three, four. Okay, we'll call him a five, right? Okay, so it's number one because we see an OH in our acids. So what you want to do is, copy the format. So write your acid. So this is the molecular. The molecular is the hardest, remember. The molecular, just copy it exactly as it's written. HC2H3O2 and BAOH2 gives. Okay. It tells us right off the bat you're going to form water. If it tells you something, like this one's going to form CO2 in water, right? SO2 in water. See, they, they tell you what to write. So you write it. So you write it. Write down what they tell you. Then what's the salt? Everything that's what? Left. Everything that's left over, right? So what's left over? If you make H2O, that means the H's and the O's, right? They're gone. That's what's forming. Right? In fact, if you recognize it, it's this H and these OHs. I wish they'd write w water as HOH because it would make a lot more chemical sense. Hydroxides reacting with the hydrogen, HOH, but they'll write H2O. But that's the point. So the H's and the OHs that are reacted, they're gone. So you just got to combine everything that's left. That's going to be the what and the what? The acetate and the barium. Now, which one do you write first? The barium, because he's got a combine the barium and the acetate. Now, it would have helped if I would have followed my suggestion from when you took that quiz, right? When you write these guys, write their little charges. Because then it's a lot easier to combine stuff, right? It's a lot easier to combine the barium and the acetate, because then you can recognize, oh, that cation, right? So do you see what happened to this formula then? The best, this is wrong. How am I supposed to write barium acetate? Put a little two at the bottom. Okay. And then once you get the chemical formulas right, then you can balance them. So Jessica, is this balanced? balanced? No. What would you change? Yeah, I need a two in front of the acid. Because you can see there's two acetates over here. Right? There's two acetates there. And then another hint is you have two OHs and two H's, right? or just look at the oxygens, but the oxygens are kind of hard. You have to do some math. But I'm just saying, if you have two OH's, you're going to have to react with two acids and make how many H2O's? Two, right? So I've got my two H's. I've got my two H pluses. So I'll make two waters. Okay. So we're, we're nice and balanced. Now, Taylor, we're not quite done writing the molecular equation, because we have to write AQs and S's on stuff. Now, this is not 
a solubility problem. So we don't need to worry about writing precipitates. Right? We don't. So I think the only trick here, we're going to write AQ on everything but one thing. Do you recognize what it would be? It's kind of a acids or the H2O. What do you put on the H2O? An L. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. You can write H2O AQ. It, it's really, it's fine, because water hydrates itself. There's really nothing wrong with it. But if you write AQ on, on the water, I'm not going to knock it wrong. The problem is you might break it up. You can't break it up. It's water. It's H2O. It's a molecule. You can't break it, this up into H and OH. You can't do it. So that's the only danger in writing H2O with an AQ. So I suggest writing the L. All right, so that's the molecular, the ionic. OK. So before we, it's pretty straightforward, Janet, before. If it had AQ, we broke it up. But we're not playing that game, right? We're playing, I don't know, this other reaction. So do you break up the, the acid? You have to ask yourself on every single component here if you break it up or not. Does anyone see? Do you break this up? Yes, if he's on the list. Is he on the list? No. So that's where that, that came into play. He's weak, so don't break him up. Just write him exactly as he says. Do we break up barium hydroxide, Ashlyn? So all, you have to ask yourself, is he strong or is he weak? He, yeah. I would just look at the solubility rules. He's strong. He's strong. Because, I mean, I don't have those solubility rules memorized. So I would pr probably be looking at hydroxides. What are they doing? I don't remember all the strong bases. You just look. And he's going to totally break up. Barium and how many hydroxides? Two of them. Good. Don't break up the water, so just write it exactly as it's written. And you break him up. I guess you could follow the solubility rules to check. But yeah, you're going to break him up because he's an acetate. And how do you know? Well, just follow the solubility rules if you're not sure. But in all these, if you're not doing a solubility problem, You can check to make sure, okay? But he, he will break up. You can check the solubility rule. A barium and two acetates. Okay. The net ionic. Let's see. R, okay, our bariums are go away. Yeah, that's about it, right? So you're left with our two acids reacting with two hydroxides to make two waters. And what's left over are those acetates. Okay. Now this is an ugly question, but I wanted to make sure we do the hard ones. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, because it's, a, it's on both sides. That's what the net ionic means. Cancel out anything you can. And is BA plus 2 on the other side? That's all you ask yourself. Yes, it is. OK, cancel it out then. Because it's like adding it, and then, but it doesn't do anything. It's just hanging around. It's just sitting there. It's not reacting. It's just, it's just sitting there. So get rid of it. It's clutter. They call it a spectator ion, but it's just clutter. OK. Good question. Any other questions? Let's try one. OK, let's not write anything. Which one is this? Oh. Yeah, number five, one, two, <laughs> in my weird numbering system. That's a number one. That's a number one. He's right, because he got an acid and a base. How about 
How about D? Oh, we can just do them all, right? How about C? C is another. C is another number one, right? Uh, how about D? Another number one, right? D is another number one. Uh, how about E? Another number one, right? Because you see that all you're looking for is the acid and you got the hydroxide, the base. There got to be some in here. How about F? How about F? You have the acid, so definitely not a solubility problem. And the NH3 is that trick question, remember? The NH3 is a, is a base. So that one's a, another acid-base one. Let's try, ooh, how about G? Christian says number three for G. That's, if, it's, if it is, let's, where is number three? Ah, oh, he saw it, a sulfite. All right, let's do that one. We are way down to G. Let's work out this one. Okay, so you look at that, you recognize it. Does everyone recognize it? It's that sulfite. First you see the acid. So you're looking at that list of the acid reactions. And there's K2SO3. You see the SO3? So it's got to be the third, the sulfite reaction. Sulfite plus an acid gives, okay, so you recognize it. So I would write down the reactants exactly as they say they are. So this is the molecular. And write down what they say the products are. So you, Christian found it. So you write down exactly SO2 gas. Write down H2O. Let's just put a little what subscript on it? L. And then the salt. And the salt is everything left over. You just stick them together. So that's the trick. What the heck is left over? So the S, the O's, right? Potassium. Potassium iodide. The K and the I are what's left over. So if you're not sure, right, sulfite has a negative 2 on it. This guy must have a plus 1. Plus 1, minus 1. So it's just Ki. Now we need to put little Bianca some subscripts on everything. It'd look a heck of a lot better. What would you put on the K2SO3? All this stuff is in water and so when we're putting AQs or and stuff on it, it's really the solubility rules. What's that? Oh we gotta balance it. That's true, that's true. There's two Ks. So what do we have to do on the other side? Put a two on the Ki's. Yeah, we better do that, otherwise we're going to totally forget. Now is it balanced? Oh, I have two I's now. Bless you. Right? Because now I have two Ki's, so that means I have to have two I's. It looks balanced to me now. Balanced? Okay. So K2SO3 follows solubility rules. The very first one takes care of K2SO3. It's got a K, AQ, and all acids. Don't even look them up. They're all AQ. And you worry about breaking it up or not in the ionic. We're not there yet. right? We're not there yet. We're trying to finish this molecular. SO2's got a G on it, so just leave it alone. h 2 is an L. And the Ki, everybody, you should write AQ. It's that very first solubility rule. Anything with an alkali metal. Okay. Ionic. So Adelpho, do we break up K2SO3? Yes. 
we kind of did the work already because we wrote an AQ on it, and it's a salt, so it is soluble. All right, we found that it's soluble, so break it up, so that would be two potassiums. And there's our sulfite that's going to react. All right. And then you're supposed to see this acid. Even though it's got AQ on it, you've got to be careful, Jacqueline. Is that on the list? What's that? Yeah, it's on the list, so definitely break it up. So what, what would you break it up into? Because you have two HI. Two H's and two I negatives. Do you break up SO2 gas? It's a gas molecule, sulfur dioxide. No, you can't break it up. It's just like the liquid, H2O. You can't break them up. Do we break up potassium iodide aqueous? Yep, that's that first solubility rule, anything with an alkali metal. And there's two KIs. That means you have to have two potassiums and two iodides. Finally, we can cancel some stuff here to get that net. Yeah, the two Ks. They're gone. They're gone. Yeah, and the two Is. That's it, right? So you're left with sulfite and two hydrogen ions. There's our acid, those H pluses that Jacqueline was talking about. Sulfur dioxide gas and H2O liquid. Okay. Make sense? Let's try, uh, so you rec do you recognize, how about H? Which reaction would H be? She says number four. H has a sodium sulfide and an HNO3, a four. Uh, yeah, there's the sulfide, right? Let's try that one. Okay. So we write down everything as it's written. So go ahead and try this one. This is reaction number four that we numbered out there. Write out the molecular equation, right? So first write out the reactants exactly as they told us. Follow that reaction number four to write out what the products are. And remember, the salt is just everything that's left over. And you have to write the cation first and then the anion for the salt, for what's left over. If you're not sure where we're at, just ask. I didn't even know he came in later. Oh. Some people have it hard. That's fine. All right. Oh. Chem chemistry with Dr. Smith. DR. Chemistry with Dr. Smith, DR. So Google it and try it, and then if it doesn't make sense, just come in. Yeah, because tomorrow. Monday, oh yeah, Mondays. You have to come in at 8.30. You have to come in at 8.30. Oh, actually, I could probably do it. If I don't, if I still don't understand it. Yeah, come in at 8.30. Mm-hmm. Now, you need to take the quiz you missed, Brianna. So, so you're okay. You're okay. Yeah, it's okay. So you just need to take the quiz today. Some You can take it over the noon hour or... Uh, or uh, 
from new from 12 to 130 Well, I, you, or you could just take both. You could take the quiz 8.30 on Monday. Okay. Right? So whether you have homework questions or not, just yeah. show up at 8.30 on Monday to take this quiz. Okay. Do that. Okay. That's Christina. How'd it go? Yeah, I think I'm doing your right. See. So, okay. Minutes. Now, don't... Okay, so this is... First, you have to write your molecular. So don't break... Write this out exactly as it is. HNO3. So, so don't break up that other reactant yet. No, don't don't break him up. It's going to be H2S gas, and what's the other dude? H2S gas and, and the salt. So everything that's left over, that's going to be. See when you say left over. Okay, what's, what's left over is the H's and the S's are gone. Okay. So don't worry about H's and don't worry about the Na and the NO3. Don't don't break it up though. No. So it'd be together. It has to be together. So it'd be, and it helps too to write the little charges because you know Na is a plus one, nitrate's a minus one. So when you combine them, it'll just be NaNO3. So let's see if you combine this. So you recognize it's reaction number four. So hopefully you just wrote the reactants exactly as they said. Right. And I think it's helpful to write the little charges in there. All right. H's are always plus one, nitrates minus one. All right. Okay. And so what was it? I think you're forming, is it H2S gas, right? H2S with a G. And then it says H2S gas plus salt. Is that right? Okay. H2S gas plus salt. So the salt is everything left over. What does that mean? That means well, S's are used up, they're done. The H's, the acidic hydrogens, they're done. So all you're left with is that nitrate and the sodium. Now those charges up there, I really like because that means I combine an Na plus with an NO3 minus. And it's the molecular equation, that means don't break everything up. Poor choice of words, molecular, because they're not molecules, but don't break it up. Right? And don't don't move on yet. Make sure he's balanced. You have Na2S, so you need two sodiums. Now we screwed up the nitrates, right? And I look at them together. It's easier that way for me. I screwed up the nitrates now. So now I have to put a two over here. Then you think, oh, now I screwed up the hydrogens. No, you didn't. There's two hydrogens on the product side. And then you play the, yes, Christina? Oh, because Na, that 2, that 2 that you're talking about, this 2 right there, he is because of this. That's why the, that's what the 2 is doing there. So the sodium ion is Na+. Plus. That's what the sodium is. Okay. Now we have to put so that group 1, that rule number 1. See how that rule number 1, you just remember it. It really helps. You have sodium, lithium, potassium with anything. It's always AQ, always going to totally break up. Acids are always AQ. Gas, don't worry about them. There's another Na. He's got to be AQ. So that's the molecular. And then let's see what you did for the ionic. Na2S, definitely break them up. HNO3. There's our acid. Is he on the list? Yes. Break them up. H2S gas. There's a gas. Don't break it up. That's together. And the NaNO3. Definitely break them up. He's got the Na. So hopefully it looks something like this. Hopefully something like that. 
the molecular is where all the work is, man. That's where you, that's really where all the work is. If you get that molecular one right, everything else will fall into place. So it looks like we'll cancel the sodiums and the nitrates. Cancel the nitrates too. And you're left with your net ionic equation. So we're about out of time, but there's a lot of questions you can practice. And if you want to write down the chemical formulas for all these questions to practice with, they're here. Or you can check out Chemistry with Dr. Smith channel, and you can, you can get these guys. Or just sit here and copy them down. Either way works, right? So, so have a good weekend.